we here after much anticipation after some leaks after no leaks actually after there was no fake leaks. price points on fake price points on fake price points that never got the price point say that again i don't think you you walked away from the mic say that again we still never got the price point we here you know who is probably popping a bottle of champagne right now of ace of spade herman host step the head ace of, spade. of the head of PlayStation Worldwide. And I say that because... Studios. Worldwide Studios. I say that because not only did PlayStation present its brand new um, its brand new PS5, but they dragged their nuts as they did it as well. And just to give you guys a little bit of stats, I will say the PlayStation 5 reveal is one of the most watched gaming events of all time with millions of people tuning in around the world. So... Just on Twitch alone, Morgan. This is on Twitch alone. 3.5 million on Twitch. 3.5 million on YouTube. 100 plus thousand on Twitter. And <laughs> Mixers, 100 employees. Shout Just out to Slasher three. and his hate for Mixer. <laughs> so yeah, no, that's that was from Slasher. And of course, if you've read the title. So, actually, Marcus, fun fact. That is the most traffic Mixer has gotten in the past three months. Hey, it'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> but I will say, uh, if you've read the title, you know why we're here. Uh, I know we were, a little, we were a little bit anticipated for this. We were a little bit over dramatic in our introduction. But before we continue, I am your co-host at Flo My Hero, a.k.a. Flo, a.k.a. Call Me What You Want, Just Don't Call Me Lazy. And I am joined by the college grad, none other than... Y'all know who it is, Metro Meta, he who shall not be named, uh, the one who will rise above. Uh, I'm excited to get into this, because this was, this was the big... Sony piped this up as the big showing of like, no, this is next year. Especially after the last Xbox reveal, where they were like, this is next gen. And then everybody saw it, and they were like... That looks awful. And then Sony slightly dropped everything with the Unreal Engine display. And everyone was like, okay, what you got? And so Sony said, bump this. We got an hour. We got some games to show. And it actually uh, it ran longer than an hour. It actually ran about an hour and 10 minutes. But I think, that, I think the last 10 minutes was really just a victory lap to prove, yo, not only are we here for the next generation of consoles, we're going to be leading the pack again, and that is uh that is something that Sony has done since I want to say even since the PlayStation Two. Since but, the PlayStation, they Sony has never had a bad console, and that is something that's very the, interesting. The type of confidence that Sony has with the PlayStation Five, we haven't seen this. I was reading uh OG Johnny Five. Shout out to Justin Davis. Uh, I was reading his Twitter, and he says. This is the first time I've ever seen Sony move this confident since the year 2000. They are moving like like a lot of like a lot of the early discussion of next gen it was all Xbox. It was like, "Oh, we've seen the Xbox. Right. We've seen the games and everyone's like, Sony's falling behind in marketing. Right. Sony's falling behind in marketing and then now we see it today and they basically just did all their marketing in one day." Right. Like and- even after this, all they need is a couple of like commercials. And and speaking of marketing, uh, the Sony event, we read the stats earlier, uh, the Sony event has proven that E3 is useless. Like, stu- especially for, uh, I can see E3 still being for smaller studios, the indie studios, studios before you're like Microsoft's, for your Sony's, for your Bethesda's, for your Square Enix. They have proven that uh, E3 is useless and you don't need to do that. And it's really what this pandemic has really done. Of course, uh, we've had to like cut corners and make do. But what this has really done is really said, Sony said, okay, we're sick of it. We're cutting out the middleman and we're going directly to the consumer. Well, and- let's not hold up, hold up, hold up. We cannot say that this was Sony starting this because you know who started this was Nintendo with their directs. Yeah, no, no, no. During the I, Wii U era, Nintendo started doing their directs every single year, and that's why they command such a... Because they basically right. made this okay. platform. 
So just because you made the platform doesn't mean you do it the best. They do it the best. Who did you? We're talking about the Sony release here, the PlayStation Five. I've seen Nintendo Directs. They do not hold a candle to what I just witnessed today. Oh yes, they do. They Morgan, we watched the we watched the last Nintendo. We Direct did. Yet. So I so what but are you talking about? I'm just saying about? Nintendo no. Directs have definitely been better. Okay, just be, they have not been they they have not been better than this. They have, their last E3 discuss. was better. Okay, E3 Breath right of the E3. Wild too. That's it was E3. that yeah. was at the end of the year, and we here now talking about the PlayStation Five. I will forever go on record. P the state of play PlayStation Five events always better than the Nintendo. Oh, Direct. the state of play events are trash. No, they're not. No, this one was good. Everyone before this was trash. Uh, Everybody knows this. Well, if okay, you're in the you comments, know, go back, look at the past PlayStation Five okay, well, state of plays, and tell me face to face that those aren't trash. Okay, so <laughs> if you're saying they're trash, let's just let's talk about this one. So let's just jump right in. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about the games a little bit later. Uh, let's just talk about the specifics of the console. So when you saw the console at the end of uh of the presentation, what did you, what did you think about it? I saw I've seen a lot of memes. I've seen it be the Ring of Vordor. Uh, I've seen it be on sale. Uh, I've seen Jack it be Kaiba's uh, pop call. Yes, I have. Uh, I've seen it everywhere. Uh, so what? What? When you saw the picture of the HD camera, the I don't, console. Let's just talk about. Pulse, let, let's say. Let's take everything else out of it. Let's just talk straight the console. You saw the console. What did you? What did you think? I, I, I liked you. it. I I did have, when I first liked it, especially with like the little jazz sexy music they had going on with it. i was like okay i'm digging it i'm definitely i don't think i haven't seen anyone pick this out before but i'm definitely getting a lot more apple vibes from the ps5 i'm starting to think that sony is at least design wise taking a couple cues from apple and making a more minimalist more modern console to fit into a more modern designed room Okay, uh, so I'll say uh, if at the end of the PlayStation 5 event, we saw the console, the controller, the headphones, the HD camera, uh, we saw the whole fit. And I will say that um, the PlayStation 5 is meant to stream. That's the that's the biggest thing that I got from just from uh, just from like the setup, the way they had it. Like this is the PlayStation 5 is going to be the perfect opportunity for streamers to actually take their content, their development to the next level through like the HD cam and having the headphones and oh the there is a built-in microphone into the controller into the controller and that just sounds excellent. One of the things that I found funny was that they had to specify that I had a headphone jack. Yeah, uh I, that's I, Apple's I fault. That I is Apple's it. fault that now everybody has to come out and be like, "Hey, we put a headphone jack in it." Okay, yeah, no, for sure. Um, what? Let's uh, let's take it down piece by piece. Let's start with the digital version versus the traditional version with the disc player. Uh, so I know, Marcus, you buy a fair amount of disc. And honestly, my first PS3, I mostly used it to watch DVDs. So I'm definitely aiming still for the disc version because I, I still have a lot of DVDs. Right. And my PS4 is basically the only way I can watch a lot of them. How do you feel? Because I've seen a lot of people, like I saw, I think one of my commentators, uh, Spawnway, straight up just said, I've never, I believe it was him, I've never seen a, a company want to make a disc version even less. Because looking at the two of them, you can tell that they were mostly focused on, look at how nice this See, digital version I, is. I will say, um, of course, the disc version is going to be more than the digital version. But but I think that's because the digital version will be lacking in sort in some sort but of sense. They and you're going to need say and, that. Well, that's just like there tenfold. Are, there. But there are like, okay. Can you let me talk before you interrupt me again? No. So uh, I feel like with the digital version of the PS5, there's going to be uh, something missing. Or you're going to have to buy an extra adapter, or you're going to have to buy like an extra USB port or something, just because when it comes to that. Uh, even though the technology is advanced, uh, there's always something with like the purely digital forms 
that's missing. And also, just money myself, I play a lot of fighting games, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, DBZ Fighter. And my worry is about uh, the wireless and the internet. And if you, when you're playing online, you don't want like... Uh, you don't want like a slow collect a slow connection, and so that would be my hesitation about the uh, digital only uh, PS5. But I'm well, definitely we should I'm definitely going to get the uh, this version. Di- <coughs> this version, yes. Well, I should state that the digital version is not like it's on the cloud. It's uh just downloading them. Right. You just download, so there shouldn't be a delay. I think the only difference is because they have said. There are rumors that uh, Microsoft has their Lockhart, which is going to be a lesser version of their Xbox that's going to be all digital. Basically, the benefit of all digital is a lot of people, especially nowadays, don't buy discs. So you buy the all digital version and they can take like $100 off. I think even with the Xbox Sad Edition that was all digital, when they opened it up, it was basically just, oh, here's the Xbox. We just took out the disc drive. Right. So... That is going to be interesting. Sony did beat Microsoft to the punch to announcing their second version of the console. Um, I definitely think that this is going to be a lot more... If they can market that digital version, it's going to alleviate because a lot of people are worried about like the price of the PlayStation right. 4, these new generations. That's how you get more people. If they can knock $100 off them, even if the console itself is like 500 or 600 they can knock $100 or $50 off on a console just for the digital version, and they make more money off of those digital versions, I definitely think that they're going to be in a better spot. The My biggest problem with that, and the biggest problem I see, is definitely going to be storage. Because yeah. they are running off of an SSD, which if you know anything about like storage... They feel, it's, it feels, it feels, especially it feels with up. the SSDs aren't as big, especially with the uh, amount of storage these games are going to occupy. It's going yeah, to be, it's going to be. And you don't want to be in an addition when you're in the middle of a game and you're like, hmm, I have to decide: do I want to keep God of War or do I want to uh, get rid of Horizon? Uh, yeah. So that's going to be difficult, and you can. I don't want to say you can typically fix that with the disc version. I would just say it will be easier to. A maneuver with the disc version because it's like oh I just got it on disc the whole memory of it is independent on the system and the other thing that's very interesting about that is because some games are going to be way more offen- like the new Call of Duty is like downloading terabyte right. levels yes. of just like honestly the next generation Call of Duty is going to be the only game you can play on your console because mm-hmm. it's going to take up the whole console and in this respect I think that a lot of uh, a lot of companies in these coming years are going to have to learn a lot from the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo Switch brands because they have been able to compress those games to a point to where they can fit on like 32 gigabyte um, thir- fit on 32 gigabyte cartridges. And so I definitely think that people are going to have to take that into account when they're like, okay, so how are we going to build this out? Right, right. Uh, no, for sure. Uh, next up, so we talked about uh, we talked about a few of the features. Let's just jump right into that. So, 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, uh, uh, standard. standard. Yeah, that's standard. Uh, I don't really use my PlayStation 4 Blu-ray because it messes up the lasers, messes up the laser over time. So I don't really use it. Uh, ultra high SSD, uh, of course. That's something to look forward to. That is uh, the big thing. That's the thing that a lot of developers. Even an Xbox developer came out and straight up said that that's going to be something that makes PlayStation games and developing for the PlayStation different as opposed to Xbox. Right, right. Uh, Ray tracing. Uh, What is ray tracing exactly? So when you think about a game, I want you to think like you're walking down it and there's like a puddle. Uh, Traditionally, from what I understand, traditionally in a game... There will be, you want a reflection in there, especially high-end photographic realism. Ray tracing is about recreating perfectly in, like, that puddle exactly what's on the other side. So if you're thinking of, it's like putting a mirror in a video game is the best way I could think about it. It's like, instead of the game trying to take what you should be seeing and make sort of like a... The if you think back to uh Spider Man, if you think back to Spider Man and like the puddle gate, P 
people thought the big problem was that they shrank skyboxes or messed with skyboxes because of the puddles, ray tracing would alleviate that because the game is just taking what the player actually sees and copying it in the reflective surface. It works on... It's really good specifically for making uh, metals, reflective surfaces, mirrors, things like shiny objects and games. It makes them look a whole lot better is the best way I can put it. No, for sure, for sure. Uh, next up, uh, haptic uh, feedback uh, so for the controllers. That is something that that's uh, something is that's really dope. good. Adaptive triggers. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. That's uh, going to be interesting. Yeah. No, I feel like it will definitely uh, enhance your gameplay uh, positively and potentially negatively. So, I am going to be interested. They didn't mention this, so I don't think it's on there. But the PlayStation controller augmentation that they released at the beginning of this year right. with like the second set of triggers, I'm interested to see if they continue to carry that over into this next generation. And if they are like, hey, here's the version of the PS4 with a second set of triggers for you because that's something that's very interesting for right me. uh motion sensor uh that's a plus uh built-in microphone i feel like like i said earlier uh more streaming more possibilities uh parties are going to be more fun because now everybody has access to a microphone without having to um buy a headset so uh, that's that's very especially from somebody who used to play a lot of multi i used to play a lot of overwatch right and on pc when you play a game like overwatch because pc the way that ecosystem is built and the way those players move almost everybody has a mic but back when i first started on playstation 4 it was unless you were going competitive it was very rare you ever anybody ever had a mic because nobody thinks about it when you're buying a console right i think building that in will definitely more benefit the competitive scene in on ps4 overall right uh and uh lastly uh 3d audio uh, i thought that was interesting uh you'll be able i guess it will feel like uh real life to sound so that's uh always uh always a plus but Let's kick it off. They started it off with... Uh, Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. Uh, it is the expanded and the enhanced from Rockstar Games 2K. It's coming out in 2021, but it is all good because if you have the current uh, GTA, you will be getting, you will be receiving $1 million per month until the release. So that's a plus. And uh, they're really uh, turning up. How did you feel about... Uh, how did you just feel about the GTA? That game will never die. That game yeah, makes it's, so I, much money and, and it's everywhere. Uh, and it's been from place it's been on PlayStation since PlayStation. I'm pretty sure it's been on there since PlayStation uh but GTA 5 alone I think wasn't that on PlayStation 3? Yeah, so So that's like triple dipping right there on Rocksteady's part. Right. Uh but next up uh we had my favorite superhero Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales Insomnia Games Holiday 2020 so not only hopefully not only are they kicking it off with the PS5 but they are giving us a sequel to the original Spider-Man with the better version of Spider-Man uh the graphics look great I will say it is uh it is a joy to see Miles Morales actually have a lineup just because in the in the oh in the first Spider-Man game, his hairline was all jacked up and all over the place. His lips were looking so, crazy. Yeah, he actually didn't. He looked like in the original Spider-Man, Miles Morales looked like a caricature of a black person. In this one, he actually looks uh, he actually looks black. So I'm shout out for shout him. out to the black employees at Insomniac yes. who said don't release this during Black Lives right, Matter. Right, right. Uh, next up, we uh, have. What, wait, I want to talk a little bit more okay. about Miles because uh, I didn't play the original Spider Man because I don't care about Spider Man. Right. But um, I would actually buy a Miles Morales Insomniac Spider Man game. I would. Well, I am gonna get this. He was in the original Spider Man game. But like, I want to play as Miles Morales. I don't want to play as Peter Parker. Well, he you sucks. you do play as uh, Miles Morales, but Morales as like. Time. As like no, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Like no, yeah. I think it's going to be good. Of course, we saw um, some steals of the Prowler, uh, his uncle. So that's it's going to be great. I'm super excited for that. I'm definitely uh, getting that. Before I move on, I actually give me uh, Spider Gwen for the DLC. Like I actually one. didn't see a game that I really didn't like. 
Just like every game. There were was yeah, so... I, there were certain games. Uh, we'll keep going down yeah, them. So, but yeah, I'm with you. Uh, Gran Turismo. Turismo. Uh, not much to say about that. Of course, it's a very it's, it's simulation. The legendary, it's the it's the legendary game. Gran Turismo. That's an instant cop for me. Uh, let's do uh, you got it, you Copper got Pass. Copper Pass for the games from now. All right. So Gran Turismo. Uh, definitely looking forward to that. Uh, um, pass. I'd pass. Pass. Okay. Just because uh, it's simulation too much. All right. Too much. I'm copying. Uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart Insomniac Games. Uh, this was uh this was very interesting <laughs> at first. I really like how they added the interdimensional aspect to mm-hmm. it, and where you can travel from planet to planet. Um, that new character looks fun. Yes, it definitely looks fun. Definitely a cop for me, actually. Right, um, so you're copying it. I am not. I Actually, no, I would copy it. I so am, we're both copying it. Just a quick turnaround on this. I am very happy with the level, the amount of like kid-friendly or right. more family-friendly they really games had, that they put in there. They really had a wide range of games, and most of these games are first party. Yeah, and it wasn't so, like all like gritty, angry, like right, that right. Microsoft, or just like the same reason why I hate going to Bethesda's. It's just they had more color in life, and I really like that. Um, Project Athea, Athea. Uh, by Square Enix. That's a cop for me. Yes, I would cop also cop one. that as well. Uh, not much to say. I really like the gameplay of it. Um, it looks like a super fun uh, game. Stray. This will this will actually be. This has real time cat and backpack rendering. Yes, and <laughs> I will say uh, I'm this definitely is a, at least gonna watch it. I want to know what it is. This is a pass for me. I want to know what it is. Uh, so what's the re, 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 returnal? returnal. Uh, I I like that game. I don't like horror. Okay. It is interesting though. Yeah, so I will copy it. Would you cop? Nah, nah, nah. Okay, and next, <laughs> uh, finally, Sackboy Sack finally got his own game. Sackboy, a big adventure. Uh, I would not. I would rent it. So I guess I would cop it. But this looks very fun. It looks very exciting. Very easy going. Something that's. It won't take a lot of uh, your time to take if you just want to chill out. It's nice to have so, another platformer. Yeah. It's nice to see that yeah. being supported on a platform other than just Nintendo. Right. So I'm copying this. Uh, nah. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, and um, next up, Destruction All Star by Lucid and X Dev. I will say I was uh greatly surprised about uh this video game because it looked like a battle royale. It does then, look like a, a car racing game, battle royale and then you're thing. fighting. But this is an instant cop for me. Yeah, I want to um, know what definitely this is. Copying. We um, definitely might just have to string this together. Oh, no, for sure. Uh, next up, this is actually uh, my favorite game that they showed throughout. Kena? Kena, Bridge of the Spirits. I'm kicking uh, people down for Kena. So, yeah, no, definitely this was my favorite game that they showed throughout this whole presentation. Uh, I really loved it. I loved the uh, it, female protagonist. It looks um, like a Disney movie. Yeah. It, it looks like it, Disney looks movie, like the video game. Well, I, I really like the adventure, and I like how they uh, focused on uh, on a woman character, which is something that we don't see a lot. So I'm definitely excited for There's that. There's way more female characters in this. Yes. Just overall. Which yeah, is really no, good. I definitely, I actually love the diversity that they, uh, that they showed throughout this whole... Um, presentation from the people from uh, from the presenters through the gameplay the characters just throughout i really love that speaking of diversity goodbye volcano high shout out to the furries <laughs> uh, my favorite thing about this was uh if you notice during the uh logo loading it was a asteroid going through the logo so the reference of goodbye volcano high is also a reference to the Dinosaurs becoming extinct, which I thought was interesting. I definitely think I'm really liking how they put this on the same level. Because a lot of people would be like, oh, this is like a Life of Strange as S game. Right. Don't it doesn't belong here, but Sony said no, everybody's coming through. Yeah. Uh, I like the uh I really like the, the the variety of the games that they showed. Yeah. Uh but yeah, so goodbye, Volcano High, Copper Pass. I have to see gameplay first. I, I so want to see pass. what's going on first. So, cop or pass? That's no, not what I'll way get to it. see. I'll get it. If it's so, like you're a cop. I'm going to pass on it because I'm not. I don't care that much. Uh, moving on, my second favorite game that they sold, Oddworld Soulstorm. Uh, definitely really liked that gameplay. I was really intrigued about it. 
Uh, just being in Oz world in a new uh, realm, definitely super dope. So I'm copying it. Nah, nah. Okay, and why not? I just it didn't like I'm not an Odds World fan. Okay. So that that to me I'm just not as excited for it. I don't play a lot of like games like that. Uh this other game, however, Ghostwire Tokyo is a game mm-hmm. that's spooky. If y'all remember, this was the game that was basically the entire show for Bethesda last E right. three. Right. It basically launched uh that one dev into just video game stardom at this point. At first, I wasn't when I saw it at E three. I wasn't feeling it. I was like, "Oh, this is just another horror game." But after looking at this trailer, it it doesn't have as many horror vibes to me. And I'm honestly, I'm I'm debating whether or not I'm gonna get it. Right. Uh, next up, we have uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. That's the one I was talking about. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my fault. <laughs> so no, I'll I'll pass on Ghostwire. I wasn't really feeling it. So you pass, pass. Uh, debate. Put that on pause. No, that's it's it's put cop it on or pause. Pass. It's cop or pass. <laughs> put it on pass. That's okay. So pass. Okay, pass. Pass for Ghostwire. Jet the fear the far shore. Uh, I'll pass on this. I wasn't really feeling it. Yeah, I didn't. I I'm pretty sure I was on my phone during that part. Next up, Godfall. Godfall. I Look, love this game. I, I'm my, definitely getting this. My favorite part about Godfall was the music they were playing. Right. Because. Every single time they play rap music at one of these events, everybody goes on Twitter and complains. And I feel vindicated because that's how I feel every time they play rock music at these events. Like, I am I am so down for that. Shout outs to Gearbox for making sure these people understand and realize what real culture be out here looking like. Right, and I will say, uh, I really like a, um, I like a first player game that's just slashing and... Uh, violence, like I, I like those kind of games, like Animus, uh, stuff like that. God of War, I really like those type of games where it's just pure adrenaline, uh, where you're fighting to be the best. Uh, so this is a definite cop for me. Uh, yeah, definitely a cop for me. And I think that's sort of like Destiny S, so we could definitely like play that right, together. Right, right. Uh, next up, Solar Ash. I don't remember this one. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, like, I, I, wait, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I remember sort of what it looked like. It was like uh. One minute. It was this one. Yeah, uh, I was really funny. It reminded me of what was that one game? It was like that Boss Rush Fury one. Fury might have been the name. Hitman Three. IO Interactive. It's good to see IO Interactive still in the game even after they were uh, dropped by uh, Square Enix. Um, this does look like more Hitman though. So if you're a fan of like the Hitman formula of them building like a really nice uh like a really nice uh playground basically for you to be an assassin in it's just more hitman for you right uh i actually will say i love the hitman series i'm definitely going to cop this one uh so cop for this one are you copying it nah all right next up this is a cop for both of us because astro's playroom will automatically be on every ps4 so, um, and it's going to, and basically Astro's Playroom is a showcase of what your controller, the capabilities of your controller. So Will you open it though? Uh, I'll, pro- I'll probably open it a few times. All right. A uh, Little Devil Inside. I'm pretty sure I remember this one. This one looked. Oh yeah, this was the one with, uh. Uh, it was, it had like the 18th sort of century art style, this one. Yeah. Uh, it looked I, very interesting. It looked good, but I will, uh, I'll pass, it's just for a $60 price point. I'll wait until it's on sale. So I guess, I guess I'll pass, I'll pass on it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next NBA up. 2K21. And I will say this, uh, NBA 2K21, uh, it's very, it's very interesting to see how, Madden went with Xbox and NBA 2K with a PlayStation. I thought that was very interesting. I will also say they didn't show us any gameplay, just the animation of Zion Williamson dunking the ball, which is cool, I guess. Uh, but of course, I always cop the 2K, so I'm gonna get this one. Like it's just like an automatic purchase. Like it goes, uh, life, liberty, taxes, buying 2K. Just one of the things I do. I actually love the series, so I'm gonna get. I'm gonna, of course get this one. 
So yeah, I see a lot of people don't like it, but it's not it's not that big of a deal to me. Like it's just a basketball game. Like I'm gonna get it. So hard pass for me. Uh, Bug Snack. This game had some. This game had some low key horror vibes to it. Right. Uh, I, I liked it. I liked it. Uh, it, so I, I'll cop. I'm a cop. Um, I'm gonna watch the Funhouse video on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Demon Souls remake. Demon no. Souls remake. Yes, I'm Absolutely all the way not. in. I love, I love horror games. So, nah, definitely copying uh, Demon Souls remake. I know my, I know my limits. Uh, Death Loop made by Arcane. No, I will cop this. Uh, it looked like a black protagonist and a it black does have a black protagonist. It does. So have two yeah, black no, I'm definitely getting uh, Death Death Loop. Uh, it looks super dope. You're trying to kill people while a person is trying to kill you. And if you die, you just start over. It's an endless and loop. And we so. saw, we saw, because Deathloop games are actually low-key becoming a very popular genre in these right. past few years. And uh, this, in this, and I think also, uh, what was the last one? Re, that Re-Eternal one. Yes. They both seem to have Deathloop gameplay, so I definitely feel like this is going to be like a, uh, a genre that's definitely picking up. Deathloop definitely seems like Arcane is taking the tools and the skills they made from the Dishonored series and just going mad crazy with it. So I and I did love the like black seventies aesthetic that the whole thing was drenched in. Um I might cop this. I might cop. Uh yeah. Resident Evil Village. Uh, first of I'm all, all the way in. Sh- first of all, shout outs to Whoever at Capcom figured out that you could put Resident Evil 8 in the word village. Yes. I that like man that. was a genius. He better get a raise for that one. Because I was watching that the whole time and I was like, what is going on? What is going right, on? Right. I like that. I really think that's going to be super dope. And especially coming off of Resident Evil 7, which yes. is so good. Yes, it was an amazing game. I'm copying. What about you? I don't play horror games. We're okay. Not, we're not playing horror uh, games. Pragmata. Pragmata. Uh, I'll probably get it. This looks interesting. Yeah. I'm definitely interested to see what it... Capcom has definitely been yeah, on the Cap, up and up these Cap, past Capcom couple Capcom has months. been killing it this past uh, two Cap, years, couple years, years, yeah. yeah. They've really so, been doing it. Shout so. outs to Capcom. And, but but they saved the best for last. Right. Horizon Forbidden West. I am so excited for this. Yeah, Horizon Forbidden West, of course, from Gorilla Games. Uh, it's probably Amazing. coming out sometime in 2021. Uh, it looks super dope. Uh, the gameplay looked great. Uh, the it, story looked... Uh, what we saw from the story looked super dope as well. So, um, just overall, I'm going to cop it. The, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn is the game that convinced me to start getting into gaming. Right. This is a day one special edition buy a second PS4 for me right here. I love Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, and I'm excited to, because for those of you guys who don't know, the Forbidden West is mentioned in the first Horizon Zero Dawn. And it's like supposed to be like covered in like cannibals and like crazy people. And I'm interested to see what new things they add onto it. We saw uh, two new uh, two mu- two new robots in this one. We saw Snapping Turtle and uh, some pterodactyls, which are right, interesting. Right. Um, so what when the Forbidden West? So we'll see what that means when when the no, we know it is. Are, it's yeah. the Forbidden West. Right, it's the Western right. uh, sh- sh- California area. It's supposed to be so haunted and filled with like weird cannibal uh creatures and we saw uh, i don't remember his name but we saw that one dude don't know who he is the bad guy from uh from the first zero dawn out there uh stealing uh taking over new robots so i'm i'm just so excited for this like this this game alone sold me on this console and my favorite part is that it is the center point like the last game they show in any direct it's supposed to be the most important, and it's nice to see Horizon Zero Dawn getting the respect it deserves as being the cornerstone of the next generation of PlayStation. So, yeah. And Guerrilla Games, it looks beautiful. Guerrilla Games, honestly, nobody does graphics like Guerrilla Games. They're the best in... The best in the... Basically, in all honestly, in my opinion, of all of the studios, they right. were the minds behind the Decima engine, which Death Stranding runs off of, and the original Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm just super hyped for this. 
Yeah, um, so that was our uh, game rundown. Uh, last thing, we have to do the uh, compare and contrast. Uh, so we reviewed the Xbox event. We're doing the PlayStation event. So what are your pros for the Xbox and what are your pros for the PS5? And which one are you leaning towards? Xbox. Xbox is more like pro consumer. Like Xbox is being built around services. So if you're going to pay for like right. Game Pass, if you want all your old games, you're going to go right. for the Xbox. Right. Which is a nice yeah. ability. My problem with Xbox, and this is my continual problem, is Xbox to me doesn't have interesting exclusives. They don't they lack a lot of JRPGs because they don't sell well. They lack a lot of JRPGs and the exclusives that they make to me don't speak to me. Their exclusives seem like regular AAA games with a little bit more money put into it. Right. That to me and if it's I also is felt an interesting that, concept it right. tends to fall flat like with crackdown right or and with that desert i feel game. like microsoft is going after a niche type of audience they're going after the fps traditional while, gaming audience while sony is trying to be more inclusive like we saw today so yeah uh but uh just the last question uh so at the end let's say 20 okay let's just say 2028 20, 2027 20, maybe 20, 20 29 end of the end of this generation of consoles who you who do you think will be ahead will it be uh sony playstation will it be xbox or will it be uh, microsoft i think it's very much going to depend on how cloud gaming continues to be right. received i also will say uh i feel like at this point just from the two presentations i feel like it's sony's to lose now yeah. just because i feel like xbox they thought they came out like swinging but sony said okay Y'all had all the talk. We don't talk. We just Xbox do the work. did say all of next all of next month July. There's supposed to be uh, big presentations on like all of their games. The right. new Halo game. Um, we'll see how they live up. Even like the past few Halos, I don't think are on the same level as like OG Halo. So I don't know if it can really live up to all the hype. What I will say is, if cloud gaming gets to be where a lot of people want it to be as far as consoles go xbox will be far ahead because they already have those services built in and playstation will be catching up however we did see that new story last year where xbox is basically going to be providing a lot of the technology behind the playstation right so i could definitely see in the next couple of years you're going to have this weird connection between the two where it's going to be, oh, I can play my PS4 or my PS5 wherever. So right. there's a good chance that like by halfway through this generation, Xbox hits a switch and all of a sudden, oh, the consoles are gone. It doesn't matter who was winning. Right. Every Everywhere is everywhere. And all that matters is your streaming service numbers and what platforms you can get your streaming service on. Right. In which right. case, I honestly think the biggest beneficiary of such an event like that happening would honestly be the Nintendo Switch. Mm. Because if I'm Xbox and I'm like, okay, I need to put some games somewhere, oh, there's a platform built for gaming that basically copied your controller layout that you can just plop your icon in and they have the best... Uh, I would say they have the best connections with Nintendo. So that would definitely give them a better edge where they could be like, okay, Nintendo, we're going to put Xbox Live on the Nintendo Switch. And there are tons of people who they'd rather have Xbox running Nintendo's online. The, right. you, had that, um, you had that report like a couple months ago where some Nintendo stockholders were like, hey, we have some people from Microsoft. Let's have them run our online. Right, right. So, like, uh, that's definitely going to be, like, a no-brainer where they're going, like, okay, we're going to be on Switch. It's the same layout. Just access your uh, Xbox account. And that, I think, will definitely weigh how we see this generation going. For sure. Uh, but that's it for our PS5 PlayStation State of Play 
event recap. You can follow me on all social media platforms at Flow My Hero. Follow Meta on all social media platforms at Metro Meta 26. Follow the brand on all social media platforms at 26 and Glenco uh, Media Network. Make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube. Uh, we have a lot of stuff coming out. So uh, just stay tuned. And until next time, peace. Peace. Uh, leave a comment. What, what's, your, what's your console of choice? Leave a comment. Peace.